This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 277 of Horse Tip Daily, a different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Today's tip is sponsored by Kentucky Performance Products. Visit them at kppusa.com. Enjoy today's tip. Howdy, everybody. Glenn the Geek back with you from Lexington, Kentucky, and you're listening to Horse Tip Daily. Well, that music just makes me want to say howdy every time. Well, we have a new expert with us today, someone that my wife and I have admired for many years, and I'm thrilled to have on the show with us doing tips here at Horse Tip Daily. Her name is Shauna Koresh. And we know her as the Clicker Lady. You know, many years ago, Shauna started a training method called On Target Training, which my wife and I have used throughout the years. It's used by professionals and Olympic caliber riders, as well as amateur riders. And it's a reward-based training system that dramatically accelerates the training process for any breed or discipline by unlocking a horse's natural desire to perform. And she uses a couple tools in doing that. And one of the tools is the clicker. And that's where the clicker comes from. So Shauna will be sharing some of that knowledge with us today and in coming tips over the next several months. And we definitely appreciate her being here. And we're going to be right back with Shauna and, and her tip today after these words from Kentucky Performance Products. Kentucky Performance Products has become a favorite of many listeners of the Horse Radio Network. They have a product that we want you to consider called Contribute. Take a listen to episode 14 of the Tack and Habit radio show, and you will hear a complete discussion on this product with Delia from Kentucky Performance Products. Contribute is the omega-3 fatty acid supplement that is so important to your horse's well-being. Contribute helps maintain soundness and longevity by protecting joints from damaging inflammation and sustains a strong immune response in horses of all ages. Learn all about omega-3 and 6 fatty acids and why they are so important by listening in at tackandhabit.com, episode 14, or go to kppusa.com for more information. That's kppusa.com. Well, hi, Shauna, and welcome to Horse Tip Daily. It's good to have you on. Oh, thank you. It is so nice to be here. You know, it's funny because you were one of the first guests I ever interviewed when I started podcasting years and years and years ago. You know what? Time does fly. That was like, what did we say? That was three or four years ago now we first chatted. And yeah. but, I, but I knew about you before that because my wife is a big fan of target training and clicker training. Uh, she she's a huge fan. You know, she had she had your your stuff and she she studied it and she she still uses it to this day with our new quarter horse. So um, I'm so excited to get you on. Well, you know, it's great to be here. And I just, I didn't even realize that it was one of your first shows when we first did that. Oh, but yeah. It is great. <laughs> it was awesome. We were pretty bad. Um. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Yeah, I didn't even know. <laughs> now, tell, tell everybody a little bit about you and what you do and your program. Okay. I, um, I started animal training, actually, with marine mammals. So I first started learning about animal behavior when I was at SeaWorld in San Diego. And that was back in 1984. I started there, and I was there for 10 years. And it was now. What was, uh, after you, I was what did you do at SeaWorld? Okay, I, that's a good question. I actually trained the marine mammals, so the killer whales, dolphins, sea lions, walruses, and otters. I trained them to do the shows. I did the shows with them. So yes, I flew off the nose of the killer whales. Oh wow, you that. did. You got to do the cool job. I, yeah, I did all of that. And then we also did a lot of husbandry behaviors. You know, it's things you don't necessarily see when you're at the show. And you prepare, you know, you, you do all kinds of elements to maintain the animal. So, so that's what I did. I heard that, too. So, now, this is a little off topic, but I'm known for that. Uh-huh. Um, I heard, too, that that's a tough job to get. You have to go through some rigorous auditioning with the swimming and, and all of that stuff. Is that right? Yeah, it is. You have a um, if it you have an interview first. You know, we got to kind of rule figure out. If well, they want smiley, out. bubbly people too. So <laughs> they they do want smiley, bubble people. <laughs> when the whole world falls apart and you're still on stage, you need to keep going. <laughs> but the um, so yeah, so you do the interview process, and then you do um, you do a swim test and a microphone test. And you need to be a certified scuba diver. And and there is a lot of competition. There's a lot of people that would love the job, and, and you need some perseverance, you know. So, 
it's uh, it's very very rewarding. It's a it's a job that takes a lot of patience and a lot of hard work because you you know you, everybody tends to see the show part. Right. So it looks kind of glamorous and fun and look you just swim all day. But there's a lot of work to it. You know, it's really a lot of work behind the scenes and and I think it's totally rewarding, awesome work. But it is um it, it's a lot more than people quite recognize. And it, and it is people often ask too if it's um more biology, you know, thinking marine biology, but actually what we apply mostly is, um, is psychology would be, you know, the biggest thing that we're applying when we're doing the job. Well, that makes so, sense. I mean, it, it really, it's like training other, any other animal, really, isn't it? Yeah, it, 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 it actually is. It's using positive reinforcement, which is a little different than some of the, you know, the work that is typically done with horses, but it is, um, it is, it is all just the same. And actually, the truth be known, it's behavioral psychology, not animal behavior. It's just across the board. You know, we, we all are learning with the same techniques. Just we have different factors that come into play with people versus animals. Well, isn't that cool? I mean, you know, it, that, if a little girl doesn't want to grow up to do something with horses, that's the other job. If they've ever gone to SeaWorld that they want. Yeah, and it is so true. And and you'd hear two schools of thought: the ones that want to train dolphins, and the ones that train killer whales. But they, uh, they're a lot of a lot of little children. You know, just you, you would be their idol and signed off crafts and you know did all that kind of stuff. So, so of of any of the mammals that you dealt with, what, what did you have a favorite? The dolphins, the killer whales, the seals, any, any of them? You know, I think there's a couple that. Um, I love the commerce and dolphins because nobody had really trained them and they're really flighty and it was it was a challenge to to get to know them. They're little tiny black and white dolphins. And that was really uh, a rewarding prospect. I loved working our first successful birth in San Diego was a killer whale um, named Orchid. And I loved working with her, you know, it just it was there the day she was born and and she was really I loved working with her. And and she kind of just taught you so much, you know, because to see how she thought and stuff, you know, and she was just, she was different. She was a delight. But I really liked working with the sea lions. You know, the sea lions, you have a lot of places you could go take them and do things. And they were, you know, they were, and frankly, I think sea lions and horses are a lot alike. To me, I think they're, it's the right? same to me. Yeah, they kind of have they have a little bit of um, flightiness. You know, they want to kind of go away. You have to build the trust. And it just, to me, and because you, we do things that are similar to putting them in a trailer, we put them on a golf cart and have to take them places. The only <laughs> thing is they could jump off at any point in time. At least the horses can't drop out of the trailer somewhere along the road. But anyway, uh, so it was just. It would, and you could take the sea lions to different places, you know, which horses we take to different places and have to teach them about, you know, building their confidence. So, so I really liked working with sea lions because you, you got to do a lot personally with them. You know, it was like a dolphin or a killer whale. It takes the whole group as part of training something. With a sea lion, you know, you really kind of could train a behavior all by yourself. And that, to me, had uh, w- w- was pretty cool. So Cool. So, yeah, so it – it was great, yeah. So it's hard to pinpoint one, you know. I, I can't say just one over the other. Huh. And you got to get used to the honking with the sea lions, though. They, they can be loud. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. A, you know, and, and sometimes, like, it, you'd be in the area, and you'd answer the phone, and, and they'd all be barking. We, we didn't really call it honking. Yeah, but... yeah okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but they'd be barking. You're trying to answer the phone. You'd hear the, oh, 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 you yeah. know, in the back. <laughs> But it, it, that is a much noisier area, we'll say. All right, so that's that led you to horses. So we could continue the story from there. Okay, so then I um, I went and I saw a Grand Prix one day, and it was uh, the people who own SeaWorld. It was Elizabeth Bush Burke and Manheiser Bush, and she gave um, some of his trainers tickets to see a Grand Prix. And I went and saw it, show jumping, and I just loved it. And I just thought that's what I want to do. I think that is awesome. And I, I didn't realize, I, so then I looked into how horses are trained. And this was back in 92. And I realized horses weren't trained with anything we used with the marine mammals by and large. We didn't, I mean, I, I, I even remember thinking, why do horses do anything for you? Because <laughs> all I knew was the true positive reinforcement. And so then I um, started with, um, I met somebody who was, uh, I would marry, but then later divorced, unfortunately. And um, that's Vincent Karish, and he was a Grand Prix show jumper. And I went with, um, we got together with John and BZ Madden, who was an Olympic gold medalist 
these he is with show jumping and moved to their barn. He found out what we were kind of doing and he loved the prospect of it. And he invited us to move to his barn. So we went there and actually it was kind of my lab time where I figured out how much of the positive reinforcement, how much of traditional horse training and how to put them all together. And so that's where it started. And then I realized it's not just for Grand Prix show jumping. It's for everything under the sun, you know, anything. You can train your horse to do anything, truly. <laughs> anything they're physically capable of doing. Anyway, so that's where it started. And and from there, I've just, you know, gone and gone and gone and had great opportunities and worked with lots of horses and seen lots of success stories. And Now, are you and still doing clinics and things? Yes, I am doing clinics and things. I kind of had a time where I was kind of just going through some life growing and changing, you know, it was after the divorce and it was just a tough time for me and and it really had to grow through, through some things. So I kind of let things go then and it, and it was a tough time, but now things are back and better than ever and I'm just in the best place I've ever been in my life and so now I'm getting the business really kind of revved up again. But it's kind of neat as you come back because you see how much the clicker training and the positive reinforcement training has become more mainstay. Um, still not widely known yet, but getting bigger. And then it it just is, uh, I, I'm just in such a, a good, a different place now, you know, that it's just getting back to it. And so it's really been great. It's really been fun to hear the stories, the success stories from people. And and so now, yep, so I'm back doing it all. Well, good, good. And we'll, we'll give the website address and everything here at the end. And, of course, we'll have a, a bio section for you on the website at horsetipdaily.com and links to your website so we'll do all of that as well. But, well, okay, so how are we going to help people today? Well, you know, I have kind of a number of things. Some of my behavior tips are um, actually more behavior tips than, than, you know, it's training tips, things to keep in mind. And, and so um, the first one I kind of wanted to talk about today is, um, it, it, it's, it's about positive and, and negative reinforcement and what those two actually are because there's a lot of, um, I find there's a lot of, unknown or misconceptions about about what those those two things actually are so i kind of thought i'd talk about that because i think the more people know the better they're going to be when they interact with their horse and and to keep things in mind okay that's kind of where i want to start today all right let's do that one today okay perfect so today i am okay so let's first talk about positive reinforcement and, and I want to tell everybody, too, the training tips or the, uh, the training principles that I use as part of positive reinforcement or the on-target training, which is my business, is um, they're proven principles. These aren't theories. These are, these are proven principles, and there's volumes and textbooks written about it. But the hard part is it is in such muddled terms, you know, because it's just so technical that it's hard to put into everyday practical applications. So, um, so that's what I have focused on is breaking it down and getting it, um, breaking it down and having it be, uh, so it's layman friendly, you know, so everybody right. can understand. So even I can it. get it. <laughs> the horse, yeah. if a horse husband can get it, then anybody can get it. <laughs> exactly. And so, uh, and I've even had husbands that were not horse people read my book. And, and I've heard stories of saying he wouldn't put it down. <laughs> so apparently it, it does apply and is interesting to the non well, you know, as well. My wife has also proved that you can train a husband through positive uh, uh, reinforcement, especially with food. We, we, <laughs> we can be trained. <laughs> and that's awesome. I love to see her taking those principles. <laughs> I took her clicker right. away. She <laughs> <laughs> didn't come with that. That's funny. But, um, okay, so positive reinforcement is, um, it starts with, uh, it, the tr- positive reinforcement is putting something into the equation. And I, I think this is important to keep in mind that positive and negative reinforcement were written by, like, scientists. So the positive reinforcement, it means something's added to the equation, which has a reinforcing value. And negative reinforcement means something is uh, taken out of the equation, which has a reinforcing value. So it doesn't mean good and bad, like we tend to think that nowadays. But so by adding positive reinforcement in, and we tend to, I use food a lot because that's what we use with marine mammals. And it's something that they need to survive. And because they need it to survive, its power as a motivator is unrivaled by anything we currently have in our training system. So the best thing we got going through traditional training, it, it, food is, is stronger than that because they are born looking for food. They need food, air, water, 
and, and they need to procreate to maintain themselves as a species. So those four things are what is in them. But obviously, the procreation comes later with hormones. But um, and and I'm not going there. No, so. I don't think we should. <laughs> we don't need to. <laughs> Yeah, the food, air, and water are the things they need to survive. So because of that, I mean, what does a baby horse do? Within an hour, it's up and it's eating and drinking, basically. Right. And nobody had to teach it that. So the trick is how do you use positive reinforcement to turn it into a working behavior? And, and that's the that's really important. So, But it's also very, very important. So ne- positive reinforcement means something's added to the equation, which has a reinforcing value. And not our perception of reinforcement, but the horse's perception and that I think a lot of people get muddled there we think because we feel good about it you know a pat on the neck is great but it's not going to really push them to another level like you know free jumping you know I haven't seen one horse jump uh, you know a three six jump on their own with no shoot no lunge line just a jump in the middle of a big arena for a pat on the neck but I have seen them do it over and over with food reinforcement to make that choice so that's what we have with positive reinforcement. And there's other things that you can use as you get to know your horse. They won't be as strong as the primary reinforcement. And then on the other side of that coin is negative reinforcement. Now, this is where everybody thinks is punishment, and it's not punishment. Negative reinforcement means something is taken out of the equation, which increases that uh, behavior. So you think about traditional horse training, it is all negative reinforcement. For example, because people get really defensive about this, but you think about it, like it, you, we get on our horses. Well, what is the first thing we do? We teach them about a halter and a lead rope. And when we're walking with our horse on a halter and lead rope, if the horse kind of veers over to the side to look at something, we apply pressure on that lead rope. When he's good again, we soften, we release that pressure, we, we remove it. And that, that's the negative. It's the removal of the aversive, you know, the uh, pulling on the lead rope. And the same thing if you think about a bit. When we put a bit in reins and we're riding our horses, when we want them to slow down, we pull on the, the bit via the reins. And that applies pressure. When they're good, we soften. We remove that pressure. What they're working for is the removal of that pressure. Again, that's negative reinforcement because it's been taken, something's taken out of the equation, which is the pressure. And then the other thing I think of is our legs. You know, we ride with our legs. We want them to go forward. We squeeze with our legs. When we go forward, we soften. We remove that pressure. So those are all uh, all tools of removal reinforcement i actually turn i change when i do clinics i don't use the term negative reinforcement i was going to say because that's completely different than what i w- would think of for as negative reinforcement exactly and that's the problem and and i'm going from a textbook this is how it was written positive and negative were added and taken away not positive. i mean it makes sense after that. you explain it you know and so, that, and I, and that's like in clinics. I can be two hours into a clinic, and somebody's gone, "Oh no, I don't use negative reinforcement." So I kind of change the terms because it just gets people's dander up, you know. So I use the term um, reward and removal reinforcement because I think it generates a better picture in our head. Yeah, it, make, in, it makes more sense for me mentally, and I think I think negative is just a bad word. Uh, you know, it it, yeah. it it automatically puts people on on the defensive. So right, and yeah. it's no. And it wasn't written as a bad word, but as we've come to think of it, we think it means punishment, and it does not mean punishment. Punishment is a different thing, actually. Now, the tricky part is some people can can use the negative removal reinforcement too sharply, and then we can move into the point of punishment. But but negative reinforcement, the horse actually has control over, and as long as they do something, we do something. So it's not a bad term. So it is what traditional horse training is about. And I do use the removal reinforcement. We'll use that term since it kind of sits well with people. And, um, it, you know, I ride with the, I ride with my legs. I ride with my seat. I ride with my hands. I use all the tools, but what I've just done is put the positive or the reward reinforcement mixed it together with the removal reinforcement. So you have the best of both worlds and you look at what we've done through traditional horse training, again, being the removal reinforcement, we have gotten So far. So when I came into horses originally, I thought, well, I'm not out to change what's going on, to to take away what's going on. I wanted to just add in what I saw not being used with horses. You know, I didn't see there was no let's, you know, reinforce him for the good behavior by adding something in. You know, there was no reward reinforcement being offered. So that's where I come along. So 
That's reward, removal, reinforcement. And there's one more little tip in here that I I consider it the granddaddy of all tips. (laughs) Is and this is just something to keep in mind as you're working with your horse. And this is a if any behavior increases in frequency, something in the environment is reinforcing it. I mean, and that's that's just your basic principles of of operant conditioning, which is learning. It's how we all think and process. Is it, that's the reason we do things or don't do things is because of our reinforcement history associated with something. So a horse that won't get in the trailer thinks, "I do not like the trailer. I don't want to get in the trailer." You know, for whatever reason, and they have found that oftentimes if they avoid, they pull back, they don't go in, you know, all the things that horses do when they're not loading in a trailer, whether it's kicking or rearing, that they can, at least for that moment in time, avoid getting in the trailer. So, um, and so if any behavior increases in frequency, whether it's, you know, an unwanted behavior like bucking or, or, you know, kicking or not loading in a trailer or raising their head up when you bring the clippers around. It's because something in the environment has reinforced it, whether it's by getting something they want or avoiding something they don't want. And then conversely, you know, a horse who readily loads in the trailer has had good things happen in the trailer or at the very least nothing bad nothing happened bad, in the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Right. So, so everything that they do. So I think that's really important to keep in mind. So if you see any behavior, you know, if your horse starts getting worse about going to the paddock and they start pulling and getting too excited, you know, something is happening. So I just try to think of it as scales. I try to, I look at it scales that are out of balance. And I just try and put more reinforcement on the side of the behavior I want. And pretty soon you're going to see the behavior you want and less of the behavior you don't want. But try to, trying to identify and see if you can't figure out what is increasing that behavior if it's an unwanted behavior or even if it's a good one because then you might want to just keep adding to it and go, something's working here, so I'm on the right track. So I think that's really important to keep in mind as we train our horses because it helps us come to a place of at least recognizing that something we're doing, unbeknownst to ourselves sometimes, might be reinforcing them. Another example of that, I just got the guest cab, don't I, Glenn? <laughs> <laughs> that's why it's easy for me. I love guests like you because then I don't have to do much. <laughs> you make my job another, so much easier. That's good. I'm glad. Another example, I think, that's a really good one of um, of the of, uh, behavior increasing in frequency with with us unintentionally reinforcing something is pawing. A lot of times, what people do if a horse starts pawing in the cross ties, they they come running up and, and correct the horse, you know, to give them a stern, you know, reprimand or warning or something. But a lot of times when a horse is left alone in cross ties, they get anxious and they want you to come to them. So sometimes just us coming back, even if we're coming to reprimand them or, or correct them, it, it can still be more reinforcing than what we think is correction. You know, so if you see a behavior, any behavior increases in frequency, even though you may perceive what you're doing as not reinforcing your horse may so just to break it down and think like that i think helps um can help in a lot of situations to identify maybe what might be going on because it's going all the, on all the time whether you're aware of it or not so uh the more you become aware of it the, the better you can be as a trainer and the more apt you can identify and target behavior you want to change all right terrific That's and we're going to get into a little more detail as we do further tips here down the line um, so, so tell people where they can find out more about you and ab- about your systems. And y- do you still have the book available? I do have the book available. Um, we actually, I'm working on now also getting it in an ebook so that we'll have it, um, electronically available as okay. well. And we're actually, it's gone through its second printing and then it was kind of slow for a while, but I think we might do a third printing. So, um, it is, and the book is called, you can train your horse to do anything, clicker training and beyond. And then um, you can go to, to learn more about me, to, about the book, about the training principles, or about uh, all kinds of things. Um, you could go to shawnacarish.com or on targettraining.com. But I'm going to spell Karish for you because it's a little tricky. It's Shauna, S-H-A-W-N-A, and then K-A-R-R-A-S-C-H. But if you just put Shauna Animal Trainer It'll come up with on target training, or it'll come up with Shauna Karish, or okay, whatever. Of course, we'll put uh, we'll put links uh, at Horse Tip Daily too. So if you if you've forgotten all that, just go to Horse Tip Daily and and look up Shauna, and you'll find her bio and and links to her website as well. So well, very good, Shauna. We appreciate you being here, and we'll have you back again soon. 
That sounds great. Thank you so much, Glenn. It's great to talk to you as always. Well, thank you to Shauna. She's such a terrific person and so much fun to talk to. I always enjoy spending time with her on the phone and in person. And you, if you do not have Shauna's book in your library, you should. It's called You Can Train Your Horse to Do Anything on Target Training, Clicker Training and Beyond. And you could, you, you'll find it over there on our website. And as we said, we'll put links to that in the show notes here at Horse Tip Daily. So you'll be able to go over to her website and buy her book. You should have it. It should be in your library. Everybody should have one. I'm a believer. And we appreciate her taking the time out to to come on the show. It's kind of fun for me uh, after having used clickers and and done the training all these years to get to spend some time with Shauna. That's kind of neat. You can drop me an email at glenn with two ends at horseradionetwork.com and let me know about somebody that you would like me to have on the show or if you have some tips of your own you'd like to share. And you can subscribe to the show th- to the show through iTunes or Zoom and get daily tips automatically downloaded your iPod, Zoom, or MP3 player. And don't forget that we are part of an iPhone app from Hallway Feeds. That's uh, just go to uh, on your iPhone, just hop on over to the App Store and search for Hallway Feeds, and you'll find us right on their application. And you can listen streaming to our shows through the Hallway Feeds application. That's uh, and uh, they also have a bunch of different news uh, headlines. You can follow all the news of the horse world right there at the Hallway Feeds app. And don't forget, you can check out all the other great shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. I'll be back again tomorrow with another new expert and a different horse tip. Until then, stay safe, everyone.